Hi there and welcome back. I am Phil Rosenberg and you are watching the Phil Rosenberg Show. I'm very lucky today. I happen to have a wonderful guest. Her name is Ambreta Agroandrov and Ambreta, thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> she's born in Italy and right now she's located in Miami. Uh, she's freelance there. She's contemporary art curator and an art advisor. She's also, and I'm going to ask, I don't know which is more important, but she's also an environmental activist and she takes that very seriously. Uh, she moved to Miami in 2013. She was able to indulge her passions for swimming, diving, and kiteboarding uh, in the Florida waters. And those loves and passions inspired her to establish something called Art Sale. Now, when you hear that, you think, okay, well, peanut butter and jelly, that goes well together. Movies and popcorn, Donald Trump and Twitter, uh, Jobim, and that sound when you hear the first few bars of his music. Ah. <laughs> but do you think that when you hear art sale, what does that mean? Let's ask Ombreta, what does art sale, how do they go together? Explain us, explain to us, please. How does, First, it, how does it work? Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil, for having me. Wonderful to be, to be with you. Um, so, yeah, it, you know, art sale really happened organically. Um, I always uh, obviously love the arts. That's my passion. That's, that's my my trade. I've worked as a freelance curator my entire life. And when I moved to Miami about seven years ago, I really reconnected with the ocean, uh, which was something that I, I loved. Um, I loved to dive and snorkel since I was a little kid. Uh, but being in New York for 15 years disconnected me from, you know, the, our, our blue lung. And so when I came back to Miami, um, I started again diving. Um, I started to do uh, long distance swimming. So I spent a lot of time on the water, under the water, and in a very organic way, um, I started thinking about how can I merge my two passions. And obviously being in the ocean, seeing the amount of plastic and understanding about sea level rise and the issues that are affecting South Florida, I really could not think about working with water without addressing climate change and how it's impacting the waterways. So I uh, reached out to a nonprofit organization here in Miami. It was called Art Center South Florida. Now it's Ulay Art. Um, they were running residency programs. So I asked them, you know, would you be interested in collaborating on an idea that I've had? Um, and it will be about inviting artists to come to Miami and really mm -hmm. allow them to understand our city from the point of view of the water. So spending time on the water, um, on boats, um, diving, snorkeling, uh, visiting different areas around Miami, in the Bay, um, and allow them to connect uh, with this element that is so important for us. Okay, so let's, let's, that's a funny thing to hear, right? Because although one thing about artists that's often true is the spirit of collaboration is so often present, right? You finding new mediums to express yourself. It's a little unusual to hear that the collaboration is taking place between the art and the water, or like somehow the water is the medium. So can you describe the ways in which this collaboration actually ha has occurred so far? Give us concrete examples. What does it look like, sound like, yeah? Absolutely, well, uh, so I, I really look at myself as a matchmaker. So essentially based on the specific interest of the artist and specific projects, so the artists are being selected based on submissions that we receive. And based on the specific project that the artist is interested in pursuing, I help them to connect with scientists, with marine experts, with climate activists that can enable them to do the kind of research and achieve the kind of objective that they're set for. So uh, one, like our most recent residency, for example, I think it's a very clear example of how that collaboration happened. So um, Cecilia Tripp is, um, is a German artist who spends her time between Paris and New York. And her project was the Choral Sonata. And her idea was to record the sound of marine life around coral reefs, both healthy coral reefs that we still have a few, thank God, in, uh, in the upper and lower keys, um, as well as damaged and dead coral reefs. So um, we selected her project. And one of our amazing collaborator is a school called the uh, Marine School, of, uh, sorry, Rosenstiel School of Marine and Atmospheric Science which is part of University of Miami. And at uh, the school, they have a, a lab where they do coral restoration. They study the plight of corals 
uh, why they're bleaching, why they're dying, and uh, they teach people how to restore coral reefs. So when Cecilia arrived, uh, the first thing we did, we met with Dalton Hesley, who's the manager of this lab. And uh, it was really about him and, and her connecting and understanding what's a coral, why is it bleaching, um, the kind of marine life that is developing around coral reefs, and then doing expeditions, both with Rescue Reef as well as in other situations with different partners, where we recorded underwater sound which she then worked and edited with other kind of anthropogenic style sound with a sound architect to create the soundscape, which is now called the Coral Sonata, which is about an eight minute long piece, which is incorporating all those different sounds. And the interesting part about this project is that we also uh, uh, com composed a 30 seconds ringtone. Yeah, it's and quite lovely. And by the way, we're going to add a link uh, if you're you're watching this interview right now, look down, look down over there. You'll find a link to yep. the Carl Sonata, and Perfect. you should definitely check it out. It is really, really lovely. Go on, continue expanding. So, Sorry to interrupt. And, so the ringtone is is a is a very interesting tool for us because our goal at Art Cell was always to um, not only invite the artists and allow them to to work on a project, but really to create artwork that then we can all use to move the people from being aware of issues connected to climate change to climate action. And so we always look for entry points that make it accessible for people to understand specific issues, whether it's sea level rise, whether it's color bleaching, uh, whether it's issues around water pollution, and make it accessible and understandable for a larger audience that may not have the scientific background uh, that uh, you know, other people have. So how many residencies have you, how many programs have you had so far? So far we've done four. Done four. And out of, to so I understand, is it out of each of the, res, each of the residents creates a piece of art? Yes. And so it's an individual product, project by that art. So you have four projects so far. Correct. Correct. And your next residency, well, what's happening now? I mean, the pandemic is keeping people at bay. To a certain degree, um, I think. In, so I'm in New York, and things are really different in New York than they are in Florida. Uh, right. Although in Miami, of course, you have a dense population and uh, substantial concerns. Your governor leans more towards opening things, and our oh, governor yes. leans more towards caution. I think. And so I'm wondering, how does the approach of the local government there affect your residency program? Has it affected your program? Well, so we are actually in a sort of a preppy mode. Uh, we're working on the, our two next projects. One of them is actually the outcome of our second residency with writer and curator Blanca de la Torre, who's working on the book, um, which is going to be in the form of a dictionary. And she's going to be working on a series of terms extrapolated both from history, from uh, urban ecology, from ecology at large. Um, and she's working with an artist based in Miami. Her name is Christina Patterson to create the visual contingent to the book. So um, this is something that obviously involves lots of research and lots of partners to ensure scientific accuracy for all the terms that we're putting together. And uh, so that's something that's actually been great to be able to be home and be able to do the research that's necessary to work on this project. A bit of an opportunity, if you will. This exactly. is an interesting thing. You know, as exactly. I, I've interviewed probably over the pandemic, I've probably interviewed 15 people or so. And it's really interesting to note. Well, first of all, most of the people that I've interviewed have been generally expansive people working towards moving forward. And the type of person that is not willing or unable, perhaps in some cases, to just remain in place. And so there's this idea of, even though you're closed in physically, to continue to expand, uh, to move forward, right? And it's really wonderful to connect with people who can sort of shine a light on that pathway instead of, you know, whereas many people are living with anxiety right now. And uh, it's, it's so, I just want to compliment you on being able to perceive the path forward, even in such a tumultuous time. You know, it's really, it's really nice. 
Well, you know, it, it's been um, it's been fascinating. I've been binging on webinars. I've been absorbing so much information. Um, you know, obviously Earth Day happened in April was the 50th anniversary. So that week was really dense of uh, all kind of climate action uh, kind of panels and webinars. And obviously a lot of artists have been putting their artwork online. So I really saw this as an opportunity to connect with people. So what's interesting, as you're saying, at a time where we're all locked inside, essentially, it was a way for me to open up and really connect with people that I probably would have not had the opportunity to meet uh, if it wasn't because of all this online programming that was being developed because we're all stuck at home, we may as well you know, use our time to do something interesting. So the research, uh, definitely having the time to do the research has been great. Having the time to write grants because unfortunately um, the residency needs funding obviously to function. And so I, you know, I was home and I had the time to research about grants out there that we could apply for our programming. And so I've been doing a lot of that. So let, let me ask you, let me ask you this uh, regarding grants because we're walking into a lot of new territory and part of that is economy. Yes. So that's something that you would think might have an effect on the ability for grant money to be present. Are you finding, uh, so right now in your grant writing, are you applying for grants that have already been established and are funded? And are you worried about losing some of that access? Do you, is it a concern for you? Both, both, definitely. And you know, we, we grant money, you just never know, right? I mean, there are obviously some foundations with a healthy endowment, uh, but with, you know, with the market going up and down as it has been, even those big foundations may be on more precarious ground. Uh, the grant that I was working on, which I actually just submitted today, is actually a state Florida grant. So we uh, depend, obviously, on the budget that has been approved every year by the governor. So um, we don't know. Um, obviously, I don't know if I receive the grant. And even if I receive the grant, I won't know exactly how much money I'm going to be able to receive until the governor signs the budget. So it's always a question mark. Um, though, you know, what's been great, obviously, is that there have been a lot of uh, relief funds for artists, though, even though, you know, ArtCell could not apply for any of these, obviously, because I'm not an artist. Uh, but it was, it was great to see that there was that kind of effort to sustain this field, which obviously needs a lot of support. Um, but I noticed also something interesting in when, you know, when it, in terms of funding, uh, and it's about corporate sponsorship. You know, I've been, I've been pursuing a diversified strategy when it comes to funding because I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. And obviously, grants are great, but again, they become unreliable. Uh, you know, there's really tough competition. Um, and there's a lot of businesses out there. There are conscientious businesses that see the value of being affiliated with an organization like ours. So I had started some really good conversations before this whole. A pandemic happened. Obviously, those conversations kind of came to a halt. However, now over the last couple of weeks, I've been reconnecting with some of these companies because uh, they have marketing money that is essentially being reshuffled. Uh, and they actually came to me and saying, so, you know, what's up? What are you doing? How can we work together? So uh, it seems like there is a reopening now, at least in certain areas of an understanding about the, you know, the world is slowly mm -hmm. opening up again, things are starting again, and they want to be kind of at the forefront of that situation and sort of, you know, being able to play a role in that. Are, is it possible for you to accept uh, small donations as you have a means of, if, if just a concerned citizen wants to help you with your project and they don't have a million dollars, but they have a thousand dollars, uh, how can they contribute? Absolutely. So we are a fiscally sponsored project of Fracture Atlas. So while we don't have a 501c3 yet, uh, while we're in the process, we do have a fiscal sponsor that enables us to receive tax, tax deductible donation. So on our website, which is artsale.info, uh, there are plenty of donation buttons on the homepage, on the donor page. We're making it very easy for people to What's the least amount of money, by the way? What's what's the least amount of money that you you can donate? 
you know? Um, you know, $50, we try to keep $50 and up just because there are administration fees involved. And of course, what's the most? Oh, as much as they want to give us. Okay. Um, you know, we are, we're working on some very ambitious projects. Uh, so if Bill Gates are, is out there and he's listening and he's got an extra billion sitting around. He doesn't need it please. really. He's already got a yacht and a house. What do you really need an extra bill? He knows where to send that money now, right? Totally, totally, okay. please. Good, good. We're always happy to receive. And outside of money, is there anything that uh, viewers, people that follow your program are interested in the art, uh, what what can they do outside of donate money? And, and then I want to ask, well, I'll ask a different question after that. Go ahead. Uh, well, one of them it's it's help us help us spread the word about what we're doing. You know, we're we're a small organization. It's essentially me, and uh, we have an amazing social media director and and friends and consultants that I hire on a project basis. Uh, so we need to build momentum. We need to build an audience. So if you like the programming and what we're doing, we're on social media. You can share our programs on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. Um, again, it's really, and, and not just because of the programming, but as I said, the more people know about these issues and the more people find a ways to connect these issues through the arts, I think the more of a chance we'll have to actually have an impact on the, on the climate crisis. I agree. And for anyone that might be interested, so if you're an artist out there and you're hearing about this and you're thinking, my God, the way I approach art makes so much sense to collaborate with the oceans and the seas. How can an artist reach out to you to explain themselves or to learn more about you and to see maybe becoming a resident in the future? Well, I'm always thrilled to receive um, information about artists or working with the climate. Um, and again, We've had artists before that were not necessarily focusing on the ocean yet, but they had done projects uh, around climate change as a whole. And, um, and we managed to find ways to kind of push them outside of their comfort zone and, and, and do amazing projects with us. So, um, you know, my email information is on our website. It's ombretta at artsale.info. Um, I encourage anyone who's interested and has some ideas to reach out. Uh, we will hopefully be in the position to have an open call again. Uh, that's how we actually started our programming in 2016. We had an open call. We had amazing feedback uh, from about 40 countries around the world, about 200 proposals. Uh, now the fundraising, it's a little bit more on unstable ground. And so it's more about a direct invitation of me reaching out to artists who I know are doing specific project and collaborate with them. Uh, but hopefully we'll be at, in that place again where we can just do an open call and then artists can just send proposal because that's a great way for me as a curator and as a director of the residency to know artists whose work otherwise I wouldn't know. Right. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with me today. It has been really interesting and I want to find ways to support your work. I'm going to make a donation and I'm going to encourage all the people that listen to my show, become involved somehow. If you can't make a donation, at least spread the word, share the links, talk about it. These are the things in the world that are important. In a thousand years, no one's going to remember who the politician was or what anyone did, but art mm -hmm. is something that gets passed down from century to century. And this is really an important part of the legacy of humanity. So let's do that. Thank you again for joining me today. Yeah, thank you so much. My pleasure. Guys, come back. Oh, click on subscribe. Don't forget, there's that button right down over there. Just click on it. Click on subscribe. Share this episode. Watch the, upper ep uh, the other episodes. Share them all. The more popular I am, the better I feel about myself, the more self-confidence I have, the more shows I do. All right. Thanks, guys. Talk to You're you all awesome. very, very soon indeed. Thank you, Phil. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.